Hey Magic fans, welcome back. This is your captain speaking here on Captain Clyde's MTG and today we've got yet a few more leaks from Thunder Junction. That's right, still doesn't end. But hey, <clears throat> we've only got two leaks from the vault and the rest is all commander cards from the commander deck. So hey, at least it's a little different. Kind of, sort of. So don't forget, we hit a thousand subscribers. We're giving away stuff, so make sure you subscribe. We're almost at 800. We're at 799. We're on the cusp. Um, also, links in the description if you want to buy cards. Support the channel that way as well. Subscription is free. Play me in the background. Listen to me do my thing. You know, and the thing, the thing. It'll keep us sponsor free, or I'm really going to have to track down Sham. Wow, it's getting ridiculous. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. We're going to start off with our first couple cards from the vault. We got Fomori Vault. Matter of fact, it's a land taps for a colorless. Three tap, discard a card. Look at the top X cards your library. Where X is the number of artifacts you control. Put one of them in your hand and the others on the bottom of your deck in a random order. Wow, this seems good. Um, I mean, for artifact decks, especially in Commander, this is just going to be house. Um, just another way uh, for uh, Emery decks and Artifact decks and so forth to manipulate their decks to get the cards that they want. Um, yeah, this thing is going to be amazing and probably going to be expensive in Commander. Limited, probably not going to do anything unless you're playing a lot of Artifacts, which I guess could happen, but probably not. Uh, in Standard, uh, I don't think we have Artifacts going on in Standard right now, so I just don't think it's going to see a lot of play. This is definitely for your Commander deck. All right, next we have Territorial Forge. <clears throat> this artifact is red and four. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you exile target artifact or land. The forge has all activated abilities of the exile card. It's funny how it says if you cast it, so you can't trick this into play like most things. Thank God. Um, but still, pretty powerful, but it is five mana. Uh, again, probably a commander card. I'm not even going to lie. Um... Yeah, just, I, I just see Commander. I don't know what else to tell you. All right, so let's get to the Commander decks. We're going to start off with <clears throat> Most Wanted. We have Vahan, the Gold Waker. Um, black, white, and red, also known as Mardu. Old school. Anyway, he's a 3-3 outlaws you control, have Vigilance and Haste. Beginning of combat on your turn, if you have treasures, you... You may have treasures you control become 3-3 three, three Construct Assassins in addition to their other types till end of turn. Powerful. Uh, next we have Greywater Fixer, red, black, and two for a 4-4. Four, four. Each Outlaw creature card in your graveyard has Encore X, where X is its mana value. Hello, Nurse. That's mm, so lit. Get it? Lit? Fire? Anyway. We Ride at Dawn, a white and two legendary creature spells you cast have Convoke. Whenever a commander attacks, create a 1-1 one, one red mercenary. So, um, the Convoke here is for creatures, obviously, to convoke your other creatures. Uh, and commander, when all your creatures are probably legendary, this seems really good. This is probably one of the best mana rocks you're going to get. Uh, and it's in white, which is kind of weird, but we'll just go with that. Um, I think it's powerful. Um, I don't know how it's going to play in Commander as a whole, um, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we have the Angelic Cell Sword, white and four for a 4-4 four, four Flying Vigi. Uh, whenever it or another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1 one, one creature. Whenever the Cell Sword attack, if its power is six or greater, draw a card. Ooh, we start making a whole bunch of 1-1 uh, one, one Mercenaries by, uh, you know, Non-token creatures enter the battlefield, and those mercenaries can make this thing uh, plus one, plus zero. Oh. You start hitting for more than six and drawing cards. Seems pretty good. Next, we have Back in Town, Black, 2, and X. Return X target outlaw creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four mana, animate. Five mana, animate. Two, six mana, animate. Three. The more you got, the better it gets. This is going to be powerful. Uh, I think I see Outlaw decks in our future. Next, we have Charred Grave Robber, Black and 2, 3, 1. When it enters the battlefield, return target Outlaw card from your graveyard to your hand. Escapes for 5 and exile 4 cards. Say so I escape mechanic in a while. Uh, and this is a pretty cool Grave uh, Digger. I'm not even going to lie. Anybody remember Grave Digger? Anybody in the back? 
you know, old folks. Anyway, we have Discreet Retreat, Black and Three, Enchant Land. Uh, tap at two mana of any one color. Spend this mana to cast Outlaw spells or activate Outlaw abilities from Outlaw sources. Whenever you cast your first Outlaw spell each turn, you may draw a card and lose a life. Boy, that seems good in Commander. Holy crap. Again, Outlaw decks incoming. Um... Dead Before Sunrise, red and three instant. Until the end of turn, outlaw creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and gain tap. Uh, this creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature. That's going to be good, especially at instant speed, especially with pumping, especially in a creature fight. This is going to be real big for token decks because you can just machine gun down your entire opponent's play field like, in an instant. It's going to be so good. This card is going to be pretty neat. And the last card to top off the most wanted commander deck is the most wanted bounty board, apparently. Three colorless artifact. Add one mana of any color for one. Put a bounty counter. Tap it. Put a bounty counter on a creature. Activate one as a sorcery. When a creature with a bounty counter on it dies, each of its controller's opponents draws a card and gains two life. Seems really good. This might actually be a mana rock worth having. Next, we have Grand Larceny. We have Felix, five boots. Who's rogue? Five legs, huh? Anyway, blue, green, black, and two for a 5-4 Menace War 2. If a creature you control dealing combat damage to a player causes a triggered ability of a permanent, you control to trigger it, triggers again. But if it just triggers and triggers and triggers and triggers. Anyway, uh, we have the Arcane Heist, two blue and two sorcery. You may cast target instant or sorcery a uh, card from an opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into the graveyard, exile instead. And it has Cypher, for those of you who don't remember. Cypher is, then you may exile this card um, encoded on a creature you control. Whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, um, its controller may cast a copy of the encoded card without paying its mana cost. So this thing is going to be expensive. It basically says, play the best spells of everybody else. Um, and everybody else has good spells. I'm just going to put that out there. So, yeah. Next, we have Smirking Spelljack. Blue and four for a 3-3 Flash Rogue. Uh, flying. Uh, whenever it enters a battlefield, exile target spell and opponent controls. Uh, whenever it attacks, if the card is exiled, if a card is exiled with it, you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost. Ooh, boy. That like creatures that are counter spells that make you cast your opponent's spells he countered. It's like a haiku or something. Anyway, we have Orichi, Soul Reaver, black and five for a five, four. It has Ninjutsu, black and three. Ooh. Uh, whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token and manifest top card of your library. God, is that good. And for four, man, hello. I mean, you get a couple tokens going in. Ooh, doggy. Slip this bad boy in there. Hit your opponent two, three times. Draw some car. I mean, make some treasures. Manifest a couple cards. The uh, sky's the limit. Then we have the theme environment. Black and one for a 2-1 death touch lifelinker. It's already amazing. Tap. Pay one life. Add two mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast spells you don't own. Okay, so I'm going to put this out there. This is the first mana dork for black, I think. Don't quote me. But the drawback is you have to cast your opponent's spells. To be fair, in black and blue and other sp colors like this, you're going to steal your opponent's shit and you're going to cast it. So, yeah, this is good. Also creepy as fuck. Look at that face. Anyway, Heartless Conscription. Two black and six sorcery. Exile all creatures. For each card exiled this way, you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled, and man of any color may be spent to play it. Exile Hauntless Contription. So, not only do you get to exile your creatures, but you also get your opponent's creatures. This is insanely good. Um, eight mana is a bit much, so it may not see play right away, but I think in Commander, this will be a thing. We have the Savvy Trader. Green and three colors for a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, exile target permanent card from your graveyard. Uh, you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Spells you cast from anywhere other than your hand cost one less. This thing is off the hook. 
Uh, not only can you cast the spell that you you know exiled with it, your commander is not in your hand. You can cast that. There's other ways to exile cards and make them cheaper to cast. There's another card in here that does that as well. This is insanely good, and people are going to build decks around it. Tower Winder. Green and one for a 1-1. One, one. Reach, Death Touch. I already like it. It's a snake. Get it? Reach, Death Touch. Anyway. When Tower Winder enters the battlefield, search your library and graveyard for a card named Command Tower. Reveal it and put it into your hand. If you search your library like this, shuffle. All right, now this is even this. This is the land card right here. Every commander deck playing green needs this. You get to search up your command tower for the love of God. If someone kills your man tower or you discard it because you will, you need to discard it because you drew cards or whatever, you get it out of your graveyard. Tower Winder, I'm telling you, is going to be a $20 card. This thing is insanely good. This is going to be a staple in any deck that's green. Just putting it out there. So, yeah. Deal with it. And the last card is Dream Thief's Bandana. Two colorless artifact equipment. Whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at the top card of their library, then exile it face down. For as long as it remains exiled, you may play it. Man of any type may be used to play it. Again, other ways to steal your opponent's shit and then cast it. Honestly, though, this thing is amazing. It casts for two, equips for one. It doesn't do any bonuses, but for the love of God, you're casting cards off your opponent's deck the whole time. Like, this is insane. Wow, is this good. Um, a GTA ain't got shit on this. Wow. All right, moving on. The next deck we have is Quick Draw. Pew, 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 pew. Anyway, we have Iris Roar of the Storm, Red, Blue, and 8, 10 cost Commander. That'll get cast a lot. Uh, four, four. Oh wait, the spell costs two less to cast for each different mana value among instant and sorcery spells in your graveyard. Which means you can cast this thing very quickly and very cheaply over and over and over. Flying Prowess. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, make a 4-4 four, four Dragon Token with Flying and Prowess. This is going to be a dangerous commander. And the commander deck that this thing is in, built right, is going to be devastating. Matter of fact, this might be the next com next brawl deck I make for Arena. Stay tuned. This looks like fun. Um, we have Thunderclap, Drake, blue and one for two, one flyer. Instant sorcery spells you cast cost one less. Just amazing all around. Um, two and a blue. Sacrifice it when you cast next instant sorcery spell. It's turn. Copy it. For each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Hold Nelly. That is mm, good. Lock and load. Blue and two. Draw a card. Then draw a card for each other instant sorcery spell you've cast this turn. We also in the field like to call that storm. Uh, but it's only for instance of sorceries. Instance. Sorceries. Copy. The raw ham. It does plot for four as well, so you can put it away for a minute and bust it out when you're ready to go nuts. This is this is good. Forger's Foundry, a blue and two artifact. Tap for a blue. You only spend this mana to cast instant sorcery spells. Value three or less. Okay, that I was getting ready to say. Woo. You may exile that card instead of putting it to your owner's graveyard as it resolves. Okay. Blue and three, you may cast any number of spells from among cards exiled with Forger's Foundry without paying their mana cost. Activate only as a sorcery. Interesting. This, uh, hmm, this has potential. We'll say that. Uh, Smoldering Stagecoach, red and three for a star five. Uh, power equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. I'm seeing a theme here. Sorcery and instant. Uh, whenever a Smoldering Stagecoach attacks, the next instant spell and next sorcery spell you cast this turn each have Cascade. Ooh, God gives me chills. That's amazing. Mm. This and time walks and oh, it's just a, oh, so ooh, mm, the stuff, the things. Um, pyretic charge, red and four. Discard your hand, then draw four cards. Yeah, I'll discard my hand of nothing. Anyway, uh, for each card, discard this way. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero to end a turn. Don't care. Uh, plots for four. Hmm. Oh, I don't have any creatures to pump. Oh, darn. What will I do? I guess I'll just draw four cards for four mana if you plot it. Seems good. Mm. Rackling Spellslinger. Two red and three. Flash two, two. Uh-oh. 
When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, the next instant sorcery spell you cast this turn has Storm. Oh, yeah. Threw up a little mouth. Mm. So, hear me out. Play a bunch of spells, gain some mana, late in the game. This thing comes into play. All of a sudden, your next card has Storm. Your opponent can't stop you, and you time walk. Good game. I know it's going to be hard. I know it's not going to be easy. But by God, it will be done. Anyway, Elemental Eruption. Two red and four. Create a four, create a four, four red dragon. Creature token with prowess. Storm. Ugh. Thank God it's six mana. Love of Christ. But remember, we have plot cards now that you can plot early and then... Cast them basically for free because you've already invested the mana later, meaning you could storm these off rather easily for four to five late game while still holding your opponent at bay, possibly. Mm. This deck seems fun. And then finally, we have the Leyline Dowser. Two colorless, one a tap, mill a card. You may put an instant sorcery card milled this way into your hand. Holy, wow. Um. Okay. Tap and untap a legendary creature you control. Untap the Dowser. Ooh, nurse. Hmm. This should have been a mythic. Oh, this should have been a mythic. Between this, Panharmonicon, everything else that does the untap and then tapping and the, and the creatures that do the tap and untap thing. Oh, daddy. This is going to be sweet. This is sweet. This deck itself, probably not so sweet because Wizards made it and they suck at that. But in the right deck, mm, powerful. All right, moving on. Next we have Desert Bloom deck. We have Curry, Talented Sprout. It's so colorful. It's got a little bow even. Uh, white, green, red, and one for an O3. Other plants and tree folks you control get plus two, plus O. Interesting, Lord. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, return target plant, tree folk, or land card from your graveyard to your hand. God, that's going to be annoying as hell. Ugh, so annoying. I'm going to kill your shit. I'm going to pick my shit back up. Thank you very much. Um, Angel of Indemnity. White and five for a 5-5 five, five flying lifelink. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, return target permanent card, mana value four or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Four or less. Um, Encore for eight. Mm. Like Revelark, but better. Uh, Sand Scout, white and one for a two two. When it enters the battlefield, if opponent controls more lands than you, search your land for a desert card, or search your deck, for, search your library for a desert card, put it on the battlefield, tap, and then shuffle. Nothing like white mana fixing. When the hell did this start becoming a thing? Uh, whenever one or more land cards are put into the graveyard from anywhere, create a one one red, green, and white Sand Warrior creature token. Uh, this ability only triggers once each turn. Good thing, because we've only got so many fetches to play. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be boss. Uh, Cataclysmic Prospecting. Two red and X. Uh, deals X damage to each creature for each mana from a desert spent to cast this spell. Create a tap treasure token. Didn't know he was doing the desert thing already. Embrace the Unknown. Red and two. Exile top two cards your library until the end of turn. And in your next turn, you may play those cards. Retrace. Oh, man, that's good. For those of you who don't know, Retrace is discard a land and play this again. And it goes back in your graveyard. So, yeah. Oh, I'm going to play I'm gonna play Embrace the Unknown. Oh, I drew two lands. What will I do? Cast it again. Anyway. Dune Chanter. Green and two for a 2-3 or reach. Lands you control and land cards you own that aren't on the battlefield are deserts in addition to other types. Deserts. Anyway. Uh, lands you control have tap, add one man of any color. Wow. Um, it's a... It's a lantern with legs, I guess. And reach. And it will punch you in the eye. Anyway. Tap, mill two cards, gain one life for each land card milled this way. Hmm. We've got the rumble weed. Let's get ready to rumble. Green and 10 Cuddleless for an 8-8. Costs one less to cast for each land card in your graveyard. Hence the milling. Uh, Vigilance, Reach, Trample. Jesus, he just has it. Give it Death Touch while we're at it. Um, when, rambling, 
when the when this thing enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain trample. That's what we needed. Exactly what we needed. Another way to uh, um, cast creatures that pump other creatures and just kill you. So basically, late game, this could be a one mana green, a green, a one one green mana overrun. Literally. I mean, he's not going to hit you. But everything else is going to hit you really hard. Um, Vengeful Regrowth, two green and four. Return up to three target land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Create that many four, two green plant warrior creature tokens with reach. And it has a flashback for two green and six. This is bananas. B A N N. Anyway. Yeah, this this got some shenanigans going on here. I'm liking too. Mmm, good. Finally, for this deck, we have a bigger picture because I was blind apparently when I was taking this. Oh, I see the light. No, last card for this, we have the Cactus Preserve. I'm not going to lie. I like the play on words here. This is funny. Uh, it is about to feel tap. When you tap it, add one mana of any type that a land you control could produce. Wow, it's a reflecting pool. Just enters tapped. Um, three mana. We put three mana into it until the end of turn. The preserve becomes an XX green plant creature token with reach, where X is the greatest mana value among your commanders. It's still a land. Oh. This can go in any deck, and it will because it taps for any mana that the rest of your deck can produce. And if your commander, co commander costs six mana, you're going to make this thing a 6-6. Six, six. God, this thing is good. This, could, this is going to be in every deck. This is, this is a card. It will be in every deck. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. Listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. It's good. Man, it's good. Can't lie. So, with that said, guys, thanks a lot for watching. That's the reveal of all the new cards for Commander. Along with a couple strays thrown in there from the vault. Uh, until next time, be kind, and as always, hope to see you crossing the game table. Actus. They're giant prickly penises. Just saying it.